In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can send notifications to your phone or to your browser, and all of this is using built-in client-side JavaScript, and it's super easy. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're talking all about push notifications which are built into the browser. Now to get started, I have a simple script page that I'm loading into my HTML and a single button that I can click on. And then in my JavaScript, I just have that button being selected and we have an add event listener for the click. So if I click on the button, for example, I can alert the text high. And when I click, you can see it alerts that text high. Super straightforward stuff. Now what I'm gonna be using this button for is to demonstrate how push notifications work in the browser. And push notifications are all built around this notification object. This notification object allows you to do everything you need to do with push notifications. So in order to send push notifications, you need to request permission from the user because you can't just send notifications without them allowing you explicit permission to do so. So we can say request permission inside of here, and this is actually a promise that it returns. So we can just say that then, and that's going to give our permission level back to us. So we can just say alert perm to alert what our permission is. So now when I click on this button, you can see it's saying denied right now. And that's because I've explicitly denied notifications. If I click reset here, that'll reset that for me and now my reload my page. Now, if I click on this, you can see it's asking me, hey, would you like to show notifications for this page? Do I allow or do I block? If I say block again, it'll tell me denied. But if I come back in here and reset this and I do a refresh again and I click and I actually say allow this time, now it's going to say that my permission is granted. I can actually do push notifications. So how exactly do you use push notifications? Well, all you need to do is create a notification using this notification object. So I'll get rid of that alert for now. And I'll just do a simple check to say if our permission is equal to granted, which means that we have allowed this, then what I wanna do is I wanna send a new notification. And to do that, we just create a new notification object. And this is going to take a title, for example, we'll just say example notification. Now, if I save this and I click the button again, and as you can see, this just has that text example notification inside of it. And I have an X button that I can close out of that notification with. This is the most basic way to create notifications. And this is going to work on your phone as well as on your computer and is super handy for sending out notifications when things happen. But you can obviously get quite a bit more involved. So let's come in here and there's a second options argument you can pass. And inside of here, as you can see, there are tons of different options you can pass. I'm gonna cover all of the different main options that you need to worry about because some of them are not really supported yet or they're experimental. For example, the actions and the badge feature, those are both experimental features not really supported in any browsers except for maybe Chrome. But the body feature is really important. For example, I could say this is more text. And now if I click the button here, you're gonna see it says example notification as the title. Oops, and it also says this is more text. And when I actually click on this notification, like hold down on it, or you can see I can actually block the notifications if I want. And same thing if I click the settings icon up here. So there's a lot of different ways to interact with this, but for now I'm just gonna close out of it. So the body allows you to add more information to the notification. And if we come further, you can see that we have this data attribute. Data is just custom data you add to a notification that you can use later on. So let's just put in some data here that says, hello world. It's just a custom object. It can be whatever you want. And we can create this notif object. This is just our notification. We'll call it notification. We're gonna take that. We can just say notification dot data and we can actually access that data. So anytime we access our notification, we can get this data property to access that notification. And with notifications, you can actually add event listeners. So for example, I can add an event listener for whenever I close the notification. This is gonna pass an event inside here. And this event is just my notification. And for now, I'm just gonna console, actually we'll do an alert of E and we're gonna do, ah, let's just console log it, console.log E, just like that. So now when I click and I close out of this notification, it'll log that event into our console. So if we open up our console, you can see we have our event and inside of this event, we have our target, which is our notification that has that custom data inside of it. As you can see here, that hello world data that we saved on our notification. So this is a really good way to pass data around if you need to like do something when someone closes a notification or clicks on it. Because as you can see, we have a bunch of different events. For example, we have close, we have click that we can do. We also have error and show. So show is gonna be when the notification shows. Click is gonna be when they click anywhere in the notification. Close is gonna be when they close it. And error, this is really important. For example, someone denied notifications for you. So we can have this error here and I'll just, oops, alert error. So for now, if I click this, it's never gonna alert error because everything's working fine. But if I come in here and I actually deny the permission for notifications, and I just refresh my page and now I click, it's going to actually be an error when it tries to send this notification. So if I just move this outside of our permission section and I try to send a notification when I don't have permission, you're gonna see it logs out error because it's not allowing me to send that notification. So it's detecting that as an error. 
Let's just move this code back to what we had before. And I'm going to change my permission to allow notifications to do that refresh. So that way my notification shows up down here. So there's a few other properties I wanna talk about. If we come into here, we can see that we have an icon property. The icon property allows us just to set a logo or an icon. So I have this icon called logo centered. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm gonna say logo centered.png. And now when I click on this, you can see we get this web dev simplified logo in the right hand side, which is what that logo is representing. So this allows you to put a little icon on your notifications, which is cool. Now, kind of the final different thing I want to talk about here before I start to go into an example is the tag attribute, because all these other attributes that you see, they're pretty much all unsupported or only supported in some browsers. So I don't really want to cover them because they could change or they don't really work that well. And most of them are pretty self-explanatory, like silent makes it make no sound. Vibrate makes it so it'll vibrate your phone and so on. But the tag property is really cool. This is like a unique ID that you can give it. For example, I can call this the welcome message, for example. And now when I try to click to create a notification, if I create a notification with the same tag, it'll actually overwrite that notification. So for now, I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to show you what this looks like without the tag. So when I click here, it makes a notification. I click again, it makes another and another and another and another. They're just essentially going to stack on each other up to a maximum of three. It looks like that it can show at one time. And you can see those other notifications are popping in. If I close out of all these and I put the tag back in. Now, when I click on this, you can see it shows the notification. When I click on it again, it just overwrites the existing notification. No matter how many times I click, it's overwriting that one notification. Now, if I change my body here to be something like math.random, which will just give us a random number between zero and one, now you're gonna see the real power of this. If I just close out of this, I click, you can see that we have a random number, 0.399. Click on it again, now we get 0 0.088. Click on it again, and you can see it's just updating that notification. While without the tag property, it's creating a brand new notification every time, and they're just stacking one on top of the other. So this tag property is really cool if you wanna overwrite a current notification with new information inside of it. For example, if you're messaging back and forth with someone and they reply, you may wanna put their reply in that section. And if they add a new message, you may wanna put that new message also inside of the body of your notification. So now I kind of want to talk about a little bit of an example. This is an example I would never recommend you doing on a real site because it's super annoying, but it's a good example of what a notification can do. I want to add an event listener to my body here. And this is going to be called the visibility changed event. And all this does is detect whenever you lose focus on your page and you, for example, hide your page. So whenever we hide our page, so if our document.visibility state is equal to hidden, that means we are no longer on the page. I want to send a notification asking the user to come back. So inside of here, I can just say new notification and I can just say, come back, please. There we go. And we'll just put a body inside of here. The body will just say, please. There we go. And we'll also give it a tag of come back. That way, if we ever do create a new notification, it'll overwrite the existing one for that comeback tag. Now we can just save that real quick. And whenever I actually lose focus on this page, so for example, if I just go to a new tab here, you can see I've lost focus and now you can see it says come back please right here and then when I come back it's obviously not getting rid of this yet but we want to actually make it get rid of that notification so I'm going to say that this is going to be a notification we're going to save that inside of a variable notification is equal to nothing to start with and then here I'm going to say notification is equal to this now eventually the notification will disappear on its own but when the user comes back to the page this is going to trigger again because the visibility changes from invisible to visible and this else, else statement right here will run and we can call notification.close and that'll close out of our notification. So if we lose focus, you can see the notification pops up. When we come back, it's going to automatically close itself, which is really cool. Now we can take this a step further actually and continually update this notification to let the user know how long they've been away from our page because we don't want them to be gone for very long. So let's create another variable called interval and this interval is going to be because we're going to set an interval that constantly updates our notification. So set interval. And inside this set interval, we're going to run a function. Let's just run it every 100 milliseconds. And we're going to create a brand new notification. And we're just going to constantly be setting that value here. Now we already have our tag set up, but in the body, I wanted to say something along the lines of you have been gone for X seconds. I want to fill in this X variable right here with the actual number of seconds since last time they were on the page. So a pretty easy way to do that for us is we can actually create a variable for when they left. And that's just going to be a new date like this. And then what we can do inside of here is we can say we want to get the current date minus the time that they left. And this is going to be in milliseconds. So we need to wrap this in parentheses, divide it by a thousand, and then we want to just round that. So we'll say math.round that value. That way it's a round value. 
There we go. So now it should say you've been gone for one second, two second, three second, four second, and so on. So if we leave the page, you can see it says, come back, please. You've been gone for two, three, four, five, six, and so on. It's just constantly counting up. And when we come back here, it's going to close. But you'll notice it re pops back up, and that's because our interval hasn't been cleared yet. So we can just save our interval like this. And then down here, we can say clear interval of our interval, just like that. We can also make sure we do a simple if. So if we have an interval, whoops, interval, then we're going to clear it. And if we have a notification, then we're going to close it just to make sure we have all that working. Now, if I refresh my page real quick, close out of all my notifications, leave the page, it's going to pop up that message for us. You've been gone. When I come back, it disappears and that's perfect. Now, the biggest key to these push notifications though, is that you need to make sure you ask for permission first with the request permission function. And this request permission function should only run whenever a user actually interacts with your page to ask for permission. So for example, clicking a button or checking a notification setting that says, I would like to receive notifications. And this is because you don't wanna spam people with notifications that don't want them. So they want you to actually have some type of user interaction before you call this request notification function here. Otherwise, it's just going to work just fine. You just create a new notification and it'll automatically send it to the user for you. And that's all there is to the notification API. It's a really simple API, but it has a lot of power behind it. And if you want to learn about more simple APIs that are incredibly powerful, I have tons of JavaScript videos on them. I'll link a couple of them right over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.